In summer 1988, an entomologist from Novosibirsk city, Viktor Stepanovich Grabenikov, examined a microstructure of the lower surface of a beetle's wing case by a microscope and became interested in an unusually rhythmic, extremely ordered, incomparable honeycomb. Solid, multidimensional composition which looked as if it was pressed by some complicated automatic machine. Studying this amazing micropattern allowed Grabenikov to design a platform of a new kind called Gravity Plane. Let's talk about it. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. For this video, we will talk about the anti-gravity technology discovered from nature, Viktor Grabenikov levitating technology. But before anything else, please leave a like on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell down below so you won't miss our videos. Without any further ado, let's hop on right to the video. As usual, the discovery was made by chance. Once Grabenikov put in a chitin bristle from some beetle's shell under a microscope and wanted to put another one, but it slipped out from tweezers and hung in the air. Then the scientists tied some laminate together from the top by a wire arranging them vertically. It was impossible to put even a thumbtack on this block because it was thrown up and then aside. When the thumbtack was forcefully fixed to the chitin block from the top, it was lifted and for a moment completely disappeared. Grabenikov discovered an anti-gravity effect in 1988 and then for three years studied it from many angles, developed the platform's designs and carried out experiments. Together with Professor V. Zolotarev, he sent a patent application. Finally, in 1991, Grabenikov built his gravity platform and started flying. The flying platform was inertialess and almost invisible from below. It is unnecessary to say that this was discovered not yesterday, but in the 1980s. Grabenikov studied the effect of cavitary structures on insects. He gave this name to mysterious radiation that emanated from their nests. In chapter 51 of the book, Grabenikov writes, I have only a handful of old clay lumps, fragments of these nests with numerous small room cells. The cells were located side by side and looked like small thimbles, or more likely, small jugs with smoothly narrowing beaks. He then wrote, I've already known that these bees belong to a species of halictus, according to the number of light rings on their oblong bellies. There was a wide vessel filled with these spongy clay lumps on my working table, which was jammed with instruments, ant and grasshopper houses, vials with chemical agents and other things. I had to take something and I brought my hand above these spongy fragments and a miracle happened. I suddenly felt heat above them. I touched the lumps by the hand, they were cold. But I obviously felt heat above them. Moreover, I felt unknown pushes, bounce, tick in my fingers. This radiation cannot be screened. Grubenikov wrote, I put a piece of cardboard on top. The feelings were the same. I put a pan's lid, but it had no effect. This something ran through the barrier. I should immediately study this phenomenon. But the instruments did not react at all, neither finest thermometers nor ultrasound recorders, electrometers nor magnometers. Explaining the weird way feeling he felt, he said, but usual human hands obviously felt either heat or cold wind or ticks or a denser medium above the nests. Some people's hands became heavier, other people's hands were pushed up, some people's fingers grew numb, forearms muscles felt spasms, some people felt giddy, secreted saliva voluminously. But how did V. Grabenikov come to the idea of his platform? It was actually explained in the book. He said, In summer 1988, I watched by microscope chitin shells of insects, their fleecy antenna, butterfly wings, laminellae of finest structure, open work of shad moon eyes wings with bright play and other natural patents. I was interested in an unusually rhythmic microstructure of some parts of rather big insects. This was an extremely ordered composition which looked as if it had been pressed by some complicated automatic machine, according to special designs and calculations. In my opinion, this incomparable cellular structure was necessary neither for strength nor for decoration of this part. I did not notice something even resembling such an unusual amazing micropattern neither on other insects, parts, nor in the rest of the nature, nor in technology, nor in art. Explaining his curious nature, he continued to write, Due to the fact that it was multidimensional, I could not copy it in a flat drawing or a photograph. 
Why does an insect have this? This structure is located in the bottom of wing cases and is almost always hidden. It can be seen only when an insect flies, but who can do this? Talking about the experiment that he was doing, he wrote, I suspected that this can be a wave beacon having my effect of multi-cavitary structures. During this really happy summer, there were a lot of insects of this species and I caught them using light in the evenings. Neither before nor after that, I observed neither such a great number of them or even single individuals. I put a small concave chitlin lamella on a microscope table in order to watch its strange cells using strong magnification once more. Continuing to explain it, he said, I looked at a regular masterpiece of nature jeweler and without any purpose put another lamella with these unusual cells located on one side of its sides on the first lamella by tweezers. But the part was pulled out by tweezers, hung in the air for some seconds under the lamella which lay on the microscope table. Rotated clockwise, moved in the air, to the right, rotated counterclockwise, swung, and only then quickly fell on the table. Now, talking about the surprise outcome, he explained in his book and said, A reader can only imagine what I felt in that moment. After coming to consciousness, I tried some lamellae by a piece of wire. It was difficult and possible only if I took them vertically. Explaining about the accident, so I made a kind of multi-layer chitlin block. I put it on a table, even such a comparatively heavy thing as a thumbtack could not lie on it. Something pulled it up and then aside. I fixed the thumbtack to the top of the block. And then unbelievable things began to happen, particularly the thumbtack completely disappeared for a moment. Then I understood that it is not a beacon but some other thing. I was excited again due to agitation, everything around me was like in a mist. But I could calm down and in two hours could continue working, everything began from this accident. Did you pay attention to magical words and some of them opposed to the Earth's attraction? It is really strange that strange stellate cells cannot be seen on them though. The unusually rhythm, microstructure, extremely ordered composition looking as if it had been pressed by some complicated automatic machine. According to special designs and calculations, incomparable sponginess is obviously seen on the third photograph. However, if we remember Grabenikov's remark, I did not notice something even resembling such an unusual amazing micro pattern neither on the other insects. Parts, nor in the rest of nature, nor in technology, nor in art. Usual hexagon honeycombs can be observed. Or does Grabenikov want to say that honeycombs as an experiment on the production of the effect of cavitary structures? ECS are a simplified example of this complicated pattern and the anti-gravity effect can be observed already in such a simple structure. Well, it might take decades to find out. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll produce for you guys. We're signing off now, but we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one. With the